What up, what up, it's your boy Bonds here from Geeks in the City back with another video game review. But before I get into this review, there's something I'd like to address. <laughs> um, a person, a friend of mine, he must be, he didn't really like the review because he considered it, quote, un, not, not really funny enough. So, uh, yeah, they got me a little bit salty, so. No, no, I didn't really intend for it to be funny, but, um, you know, apparently it wasn't funny, it didn't really sell him, so, uh, um, you see this? This is what we call a Jerry, and for people who don't know what a Jerry is, it's kind of like an inside joke for people who listen to our podcast consistently, so I'm just gonna do this there for that person, and without further ado, let's get into this video. The next game I will be reviewing is called Astro Chain. It is a Nintendo Switch exclusive, and it is developed by Platinum Games. If you don't know, uh, the developers of Platinum Games, they've had a lot of action hit titles such as Bayonetta and Nero Tom are probably one of the best games of 2017. Uh, the fan base and the players really praise Platinum Games for their take and unique form of the action combat. Uh, they bring a lot of different things to the table when it comes to action combat and it's like it's very different. And I consider Astro Chain to be literally another example of that. This game does go for $60 uh, base price. You can probably find a sale or a voucher code somewhere for a cheaper price because this game did come out a few weeks ago. And some people were a bit on the fences of the price because it is a brand new IP. But I can assure you that Astro Chain is worth all the money. And plus, this game does not have any season passes or paid DLC content. So the $60 that you pay, it's gonna be sixty dollars for a whole entire game, and you can't really say that for most games nowadays because every single game that you most likely buy is behind a it's behind microtransactions. But I like to say that Astro Chain is not one of those games. Now let's get into this story. Um, the way the story goes is basically you play, uh, you can pick between a brother and a sister and their twins. Um, quick disclaimer: you can pick each character like. It depends on the play style because like the story, the only thing that really changes depending on the character that you pick is your customization options and that's pretty much it. The story pretty much stays the same between both characters so you know I don't want nobody to tell y'all oh it's a different story for the guy and then the girl like no it's, it's pretty much the same thing. These twins basically just started working at a elite police force called Neuron, who I like to call the Jojo Prince thing, I will be explaining that later. And their jobs is to basically uh, combat these otherworldly creatures called Chimera. And these Chimera basically pull like unsuspecting civilians and humans into this rift, and humans can't live there for long because it sucks the life force out of them. So it's up to Neuron to fight the Chimera and rescue the civilians. And also, <laughs> a quick side note, that these Chimera are technically invisible to the human eye if you if, if you catch my drift. So uh, y'all pretty much know where this game is going, okay? Like, I'm just gonna tell y'all straight up, y'all know where this is going. For the most part, conventional weapons such as uh, like swords and guns don't really, they're viable, but they don't really have much of an effect on the Chimera. So Neuron basically, they, use the Chimera against them to make anti-Chimeric technology. And the most unique of these is called the Legion. Basically fighting fire with fire. It's literally a stand. You, you really just have a stand and it's lit. Uh, the way they have it presented is basically you, your Legion, and yourself is basically tethered to each other via a vibrant blue neon chain, ironically astral chain. And you keep the Legion in a pack on your back, similar to the Proton Pack from Ghostbusters. It looks just like that. Like when you look at this pack, 
you can see the comparison. I am not making this up. And all this happens in the first chapter, actually. So you and your squad, you meet your squad, they teach you how to teach you like how to fix up your legion or whatever. You do like a little tutorial. So you go to this rift and you know, since you're they just got these legions and they didn't really know how to control them because in the red area the legions they you know they get stronger so they lost control of the legions so up to thank god for you and your plot armor pro tag you have the ability to sync perfectly with your legion and it's now also your job to collect all your squad's legions and to come out to come at white you're at it so that gives you the excuse to have multiple legions at one time i'm not gonna lie to you i kind of like the aesthetic that they have going for this game, like the JoJo Police Force, because if you do listen to the podcast, JoJo is probably one of my favorite anime manga series of all time. So I knew what I was getting into when I was playing this game. But not to be biased, I feel like it's, it's this game is anime AF, okay? Like, I, I can't really lie about that. Like, this, you, you saw the opening. Like, this game is legitimate anime, okay? But for now, let's get into the presentation. Presentation-wise, this game oozes personality from start to finish, okay? Uh, most of the missions that you take part in are in a floating city called the Ark, and your main hub area is a futuristic take on a police station with uh, holograms, and instead of having laptops, you have like these, these little desks, and they're like, you know, you can basically just tap or whatever. It's, it's what you would get, it's basically what you would see from like, a neon punk dystopia of a police station and the best part of this police station in my opinion was like a little mascot that runs around the area and it's, it's very hilarious when you actually meet it and I can say for the most part that these characters each one is different because there's a lot of different NPCs in the police station that you can talk to and you can do like, those side quests for them on the side once you're done with your chapter missions and it's not the third and they actually give you a camera so you can basically take pictures of of your, your squad mates and you can do like little selfies or whatever you can change the tone you can change your, your poses and i can literally say for the most part i spent like a good two hours before even starting this game just running around the police station and like just just being goofy so i really appreciated that the game will have you traveling to different areas uh from your main hub area which is police station you have like your downtown arc area and this is kind of like your basic urban setting, your metropolis area, similar to Shibuya and Times Square, if I, if I can compare those two. Uh, there's always something going on. There's like, it's like a little mall area. There's like lots of people. You can actually go and buy ice cream to give yourself stat boosts before you like start doing like your combat missions. And I really like that because like it's like a little subtle touch to have you interact with the world in some sort of way. Uh, my favorite area was actually, it's like very, it's a rehabilitation center. It's like a, it's like an all white hospital. Like as soon as you walk in, the hospital is just all white and it's just light colors and it's so bright. It's honestly what you expect from a futuristic hospital. Like, and I guess it, it represents cleanness in a way because literally that place is just, it looks bright. Like it just looks good. And you do have your slum area, which you get into and it's very dark, it's kind of depressing. You have like people, you know, living on the like living on the like, little shanty houses and whatnot, and you can interact with these people still. And I one thing I didn't uh, I didn't mention was the fact that like they have these vending machines, and like depending on which area you go, like the vending machines they all have their each have different personalities depending on which area you go. Like the, the police station, you know, it's a typical oh hello, uh, hello officer, uh, how you doing today? Being polite. More or less for the urban setting, it's kind of the same thing. The hospital, like the personality of the machine was so proper. And I was like, okay, so like, and then when you get to the slums, the machine is like, what you want? Like, why are you buying stuff? Get away from me. It was, it was literally just, it represented each area perfectly. And last but not least, I would like to say the, um, the red area. The red area is basically the Chimera's world uh, where they pull people from the rifts and literally, it's all red. Like, when as soon as you step into this rift, when you start the game, when you still when you go with your squad, it's literally red. Like everything is red. The chimera are red. The the layout are red. The platforms are red. You do have a little bit of blues here and there, but that's like I say mostly for puzzle purposes. 
but the game is really colorful. Like it's more colorful than Omninaki, I'll give it that. The colors kind of pop out in your face to be honest with you. I'm surprised that this game looks so well on the Nintendo Switch. But uh, yeah, that was presentation. But for now, let's get into the graphics and the performance. For graphics, I'd like to say that this game is pretty well fleshed out. It's for a game on the Switch, like I said earlier, this game looks really, 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 really good. Uh, the colors are basically in your face, like the neon punk dystopia feel that they have to the game. You can customize your character's colors. You can basically do whatever you want with your character. Just some things that you can't do, obviously. It's not like a, like a gym action RPG where you can make your own character from the ground up. But you can customize your character. You can put cosmetics on your character. Each character looks different, especially your squad mates. There is literally color oozing like one of your one of your uh, your like one of your teammates or whatever literally has vibrant pink hair probably that you've seen in the opening like it's just this game i feel like really fit the fact that you being a futuristic cop in a dystopia world like it really captures that feeling very well especially with how flashy the combat is in general and how your beasts or your legions move around the area and for the most part the game has no poppins or I didn't see any. Probably when you start, like when you go to New Harry, you might see some textures pop out a little bit. But other than that, the game runs actually very well. And that's surprising considering, you know, the hardware for the Switch, the capability of the Switch. The game docked runs at a dynamic resolution of 900p. If you don't know what dynamic resolution is, it's kind of like, I feel like in order to sacrifice the quality or the performance of the game, the game's image quality will fluctuate depending on how much stuff is going on. So if there's nothing really going on, and it's like, you know, it's not a combat scenario or it's nothing a lot of people crowding up the screen, the game will stick to 900p, but then it will downgrade if there's a lot of stuff going on to 700. So it kind of alters back and forth. I didn't really notice it. I noticed it a little bit slightly when I was fighting enemies that the image quality would tear because I do have a very large TV and the larger your TV is, you know, the, it stretches the screen out depending on, you know, on the resolution. So I didn't really, even with then, I didn't really notice it too bad, probably until the end of the game with the with like the, the enemies kind of bombard you, like bombard you on screen. So for the most part, I feel like it was a smart choice because it was either you sacrifice literally your image quality for frame rate and performance, but they kind of balanced it out where to have you can have a, probably a good resolution and you can still play the game at a good frame rate without any dips. And for the frame rate, it runs at 30 FPS locked. And the game didn't really dip. Like, it dipped less than Oninaki, which is surprising considering how better looking this game is compared to Oninaki. Uh, the dips, I say, rarely occurred, or when you fight like a lot of groups of enemies and it's like a lot of flashy stuff going on in the background. And there was just a dip there, probably once or twice I've seen this whole entire game. And this game is 12 to 18 hours. So, that's very good. I always praise Nintendo for optimizing their games for their console because they know that they have to optimize this game because it's a Switch. It's not really as powerful as a PS4, Xbox, or PC. So the way they optimize their games to suit the hardware is very well respectable and I love that about Nintendo. They do that for actually all their exclusives actually when you think about it. The game in handheld runs at a dynamic resolution also of 720p and it gets lower from there. I played most of the game on docked but there was a few segments that i played on handheld and it didn't really it was what i expected from astral chain if you did play mortal kombat like handheld on the switch people who do know the game was locked at 60 fps but then the game the graphics were kind of it was downgraded significantly but for Astro Chain, it still looked good. It still looked very, very good handheld. And it was locked at 30 FPS. So it's like, you're not really sacrificing much. It's not like I'm asking for the game to be 1080p, like handheld, you know, like that's, because that was the case, they would have to sacrifice the frame rate. And when it comes to action games, you don't want your frame rate. Action games and fighting games in general, you do not want your frame rates to be dropping at all. And I could literally say that for myself also. <laughs> And last but not least, <laughs> let's get into the gameplay and the combat because these these two are the highlights of this game. Like, no matter what all I said now, 
it all gets real when it comes to the combat. <laughs> the combat revolves around you as your character and you can control your legion also with the combination of the ZL and the right stick. Your legion auto attack, but there are commands that you can get from upgrading your legion in order to have them do specific moves. Your character has a list of three weapons. It has a X baton, which is your basic balance of speed and power. You have your pistol, which is your ranged weapon that you can shoot enemies for afar or enemies that like usually fly around and they can't really get beat on them. And you have your gigantic buster sword. I call it the buster sword because it's like basically a big great sword and it swings very slow, but you can tank out and get dish out lots of damage. Lots of damage. I love using the great sword for like the boss battles because depending on which legion you use, you can dish out like a good 20% health just doing one combo. You can dodge using the B button, I'm pretty sure. You can like do like the three dodges in a row. And if you time your dodge right, you can do a perfect dodge and you can land these attacks called sync attacks. And these sync attacks basically are attacks where you can pair up with your legion and do flashy combo for starters and finishers, and which is the highlight of this game. You have a good, I think five legions. You have their sword legion, which is your melee, like all, all up in your face attacker. You have your air legion, but it's kind of like your range if you want to get far away from an enemy that's not like a dancer, you're trying to retreat. You have your arrow legion. You have your fist legion, which is my favorite because of, uh, uh, because of, it, it's, it's a JoJo stand, okay? It's a JoJo stand. <laughs> you have a, your tank legion, which is like a legion, like a, like a gigantic buster sword, and it kind of defends you from attacks. And last but not least, you have your Beast Legion. And it's like this Legion, I feel like it's the most agile album because you can actually ride on your Legion. And if you're trying to get away from an enemy, if you're losing health, you can basically ride on Legion. And as long as you're riding on your Legion, on the Beast Legion at least, you auto dodge. So it gives you time to actually think your moves, or like you actually can think you're playing your moves and think ahead and don't have to worry about you getting hit. I can honestly say that the compass is fast, smooth, intuitive. It's really good. Like this combat is probably the best I have ever seen. <laughs> this year, like I I have not been happy. I have not been more happy playing my Switch than I was playing this game because the combat is so good. Landing the sync attacks after you, even after you do a perfect dodge, there are a lot of other ways for you to do your sync attacks with your beast legions or all your legions in general actually, because each legion plays differently. Each legion has a different play style and it's up to you to, it's basically up to you to figure out which way you wanna play with your legion. You can play with you any way you want. I used to, I used more conventional methods. I used to, I used to be smart when I played my legions actually, when I tell you that, to be honest with you. Like for example, you can use your X baton, you can use any weapons you can with all your other legions and they all do different moves depending on which weapon that you pick. So I would usually pick, like if I had a, if I had my arrow legion out, I would switch to my gunner, like my pistol, and then I would just do range, I would just spam out range attacks and bombard them with all these attacks for the most part. You don't think that it does a lot of damage and once you sync your attacks, it does good and hefty amounts of damage. You can upgrade your legions, like I said earlier, with these combat skills, and these skills are basically skills that you can, that they do themselves, but you can basically map them to the X and Y buttons so you can do them on the fly. And they do have cooldowns for the most part, so you have to probably wait, you can't just spam the command attacks all you, all you want, you have to actually be smart. And also, there is a gauge for your legion. So if your legion does take damage or if you spam sync attacks, your gauge can go down at a very rapid rate. And then if your legion goes away, you are basically vulnerable to all attacks that you can't defend unless you have a certain legion now or you can't really dodge as much because you know there's a lot of enemies on screen. So you're probably gonna get hit. So it's always smart to manage your legions accordingly considering the fact that you can regain your gauge by using basic, by using basic attacks. You can upgrade your legions also, actually, and yourself. You can upgrade like your, your base weapons and like your sword, your gunner, and your great sword. You can upgrade all those through like different to find different combo strings. But for the most part, you can go through the whole entire game without without literally upgrading your character at all and just upgrading your legion. But 
I like to do the flashy stuff so you know I was out here upgrading. And don't worry about once you finish the game, that's all you have to do. No, no, no. Because they separate these games through chapters, okay? And you have your red missions and you have your blue missions. Your red missions and your blue missions are optional because you can just go to them after you start the game, just go right to the main story. But these missions basically offer you better, I guess like, they offer you like more replayability because you know the side missions aren't really, you know, like help somebody cross the street or help that kid find his mom or whatever, like little stuff like that. And then you have your red, your red missions where basically like your combat scenarios where people get pulled into the wrist while you're on duty on patrol. And it's up to you to, you know, if you want to, you can go save them. But having these missions there usually count towards your overall grade. And these letter grades are S through A, B, C, D. And at the end of the chapter, depending on how good you are doing these missions, you can get special items and you can rank up your, your grade scores on these items. You can get like, like a like a please cap, you can get like special outfits, you can get colors, like three colors for your character. So it's always good this game that for war is replayability because you can go back and find secret missions that you didn't see in the first playthrough like I did. And so, yeah, I feel like this game is really, was a really good thought out addition to Platinum Games Repertoire, especially to the Nintendo Switch. My verdict of this game, if I rate it through 1 to 10, I'll give it a solid 9 because I don't want to give it a 10 because I don't want people to think I'm biased. But yeah, I would probably give this game a 9 or 10. This game is really fantastic. I feel like the Switch needed this game because people complain about the Switch not having like mature feeling when it comes to video games. You know, you have like Smash Brothers and you have Legend of Zelda, which I would say Zelda is kind of mature for the most part, but the kind of the ton, kind of tone that it gives off is very lighthearted. If you want something with a little bit more, like more of a little grungy, uh, modern take, a little serious tone, Astro Chain is a game for you. And plus, I can literally say that Astro Chain is probably the best action game that the Switch has right now. And plus, it is an exclusive title, so you would not be able to get this game anywhere else other than the Switch. So, um, yeah, this has been Balance for Geeks in the City. I do have a Borderlands review coming up next week. So, uh, I just want to thank you guys for all the love and support, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.